The idea of a living force is an obsolete scientific theory that there is a creative force. The theory was eventually absorbed into the modern theory of energy. But it is interesting to think that if the idea had been maintained, instead of having energy equals mass, times the speed of light squared, we would have had the living force equals mass, times the speed of light squared. This would have changed our outlook of the universe and our place within it totally, for with the belief in a creative force comes the question, what can be achieved, what are the possibilities and opportunities within creation? This is a totally different view from modern physics that can be summed up in the second law of thermodynamics, that entropy or disorganization will always increase. It is the physics that leads to the idea that if Africa had the same standard of living as the United States of America, it would destroy the environment. It is the physics of global warming. It goes with the idea that even though we live in a universe of continuous motion, continuous energy exchange, the only way for us to create enough energy is by nuclear power, dividing the atom and destroying the unity of life and the symmetry of space and time in the process. It is truly the physics of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics, representing the continuous disorganization and decline of the civilization that created it. But one of the great unsolved mysteries of modern physics is where does the organization come from for the continuous disorganization of entropy that we have in the second law of thermodynamics. In a new theory called quantum atom theory, this organization is not formed at the beginning of the universe with a big bang, but is being formed here and now as a process of continuous spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This symmetry is formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light forming a great dance of creation of continuous energy exchange. When light waves interact with the electrons of atoms it forms photon-electron couplings and the electron is the most spherical object in the universe. This forms the symmetry or organization for the continuous disorganization or entropy that we have in the second law of thermodynamics. We see and feel this process as the flow of time with the future coming into existence with each new photon oscillation or vibration. As photon energy cascades down it forms greater degrees of freedom for the increase in disorganization or entropy. One of the main effects these photon oscillations or vibrations have on the individual is the aging process as time unfolds photon by photon. But this process can also be seen as the living force or creative force that created the driving force for the evolution of life and the creativity that we see in art and poetry. For the idea of the living force is based on the principle that the power of a moving object increases relative to its speed squared. This means that the motion of even small bodies, provided their speed is great, can represent a great power. A good example of this is steam power, with each particle of water vapor being very tiny but having the potential to perform an action of great power. In this theory, the power of the living force is formed by one creative process that unites human potential with electrical potential and gravitational potential. The best way to explain this is to dumb down consciousness to the level of electrical activity in the brain that is aware of its own electrical potential within its own reference frame. It is this process of each one of us having our own reference frame that gives the brain the concept of mind with each one of us having our own unique view of life from the center of our own reference frame. The continuous flow of ideas that forms consciousness is always in the moment of now within the center of its own created reality. This is why each individual can look back in time 
in all directions at the beauty of the stars. Therefore, the individual is always in the centre of their own created reference frame as an interactive part of creation. I believe this is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new photon oscillations or vibrations coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of the artist. The wave-particle duality of light is continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. Because electric charge is an innate part of all matter, and the photon of quantum mechanics is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, this makes consciousness the most advanced part of one universal process. Therefore we can comprehend this process as time, with memories of the past, and a potential future that is always uncertain. By doing this we can link quantum uncertainty with electrical potential and gravitational potential of Newton's universal law of gravitation. In this theory, Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square law of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wave fronts of electromagnetic radiation. We have one interactive universal process continuously unfolding at the quantum level of the atoms. We see and feel this process as time, as a physical process of continuous energy exchange that is formed light photon oscillation by light photon oscillation. Objects form their own time by slowing up the rate that time flows relative to their energy and momentum. Gravity is not a real force at all. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate the time flows. In this theory, mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down, it takes more effort to move an object from A to B, and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also, Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory, because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Unless acted upon by a net unbalanced force, an object will maintain a constant velocity this theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life, explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all, this theory 
gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life with a past and potential future that we can interact with from the centre of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore, even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process, forming their own future space-time, relative to their energy and momentum, of their own actions. In this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe. It will help in the promotion of this theory.